Honestly, I'm not too sure how I feel about this episode of Rakugo. I mean, I still enjoyed it. I just have not enjoyed it anywhere near as much as I enjoyed the last bunch of episodes. I mean, this one was still good. It still had all them feels. I don't know. It didn't feel too inspirational to me. It kind of feels like they didn't do much growth in their professional life in this one. In their emotional life, there were a few little cute moments, actually. Really, really cute moments. Oh, but they were all dampened by the fact that Mio Kichi is just getting so jelly and I feel so bad for her. I feel bad for goddamn Yakumo who has to listen to his master and... I mean, even though his master didn't say it, it was clear his master was jealous. The Yakumo was spending time with Mio Kichi and so straight away, Yakumo was out of there. He just started full on ignoring Mio Kichi all the time and I hated that. Man, she was already having a bad enough time barely being able to see him. And then when it came to, like, him finally, like, shoving her away, oh. She cried and ruined her geisha makeup, man. <laughs> that really hurt me. Especially since she probably got sent home from work that day because her makeup ran and... Oh, it must have just been so damn horrible for her. And she doesn't deserve that. She's been such a good friend to him, if nothing else. I mean, yes, she clearly wants to be more than friends. I mean, I thought she understood <laughs> how he was... But apparently not 100%. She still wants to be as important to him as Sukuroku is. And that's just not going to happen. But god damn. Sukuroku and Yakumo had so many cute moments in this episode. Like seriously. In the bath right at the beginning. That was adorable. When he managed to trick Sukuroku into like falling asleep. Rather than going out and drinking. Just by like playing with his ears. Creepy as all hell. Yes, because that is just so feminine. That's the kind of thing like a geisha does for a man. And I think that's why Miyokichi was so freaked out by the whole thing. Coming in and seeing Yakumo act like the woman for Sukuroku. <laughs> that was such a jealous moment. And that eye twitch, man. I'm wondering right now. I am properly wondering. Is that eye twitch just from like the stress and the loneliness? Or is it something else? Um, it's not a massive thing, but I mean, multiple sclerosis can cause eye twitches, I know for a fact. And that would be fucking sad if she's recently found out that she's going to be dying or possibly paralyzed soon. And that's why she wants some comfort in friends and she's just not getting it from Yakumo. That could be a thing. <laughs> that could be why she turns to Sukuroku. Alternatively, she could go to how I always imagined she was going to be at the beginning, but then completely changed my mind on when I saw how she was acting. And she could turn full bitch mode and just completely be like, fine, Yakumo, you want to ditch me for Sukuroku? Watch how I steal your man. Which would make sense. Kind of. I mean, I'd feel terrible if that happened because Miyokichi has been so damn cute in this one. But I mean, we clearly see Sukuroku and Miyokichi having a bit of a moment in the preview for the next episode. I mean, even in this episode, the way she was snapping at him, the way he was just not taking it seriously and playing with her, that was kind of cute. Like, I could see that budding into romance eventually, but, oh, it's going to be so bad if Mio Kichi does just do it out of spite. Like, if it's loneliness and she just falls into Sukuroku's hands, that could be quite nice, as long as she doesn't have a ton of regret when it comes to Yakumo. Hopefully Yakumo will be happy with the idea that he gets to spend his future days with his two best friends. Or maybe he will be just ridiculously pissed. The fact that Sukuroku was stolen away from him by a woman who he always thought was on his side. Oh, So I don't know where this one is going right now. It could be so damn drama filled in the next few episodes. Oh, but I am looking forward to it. There's one thing that's really annoying me, and it's the same thing that's annoyed me since, like, episode two. I want to see more of the characters from the future. And apart from that, I want them to skip forward a bit more. I mean, we're, half, we're more than halfway through this series now. And yet we haven't had the introduction of Sukuroku's daughter yet. Again, whose name I will not remember until she actually comes back into the story. I mean, I like the way they're pacing it. It's just... I thought she would have been around for a little while longer before the accident is going to happen. I mean, they're going to have to show the accident, like, by the end of this. 
I would prefer it if they showed it like around episode 10 and let us have a lot of time for some closure. Especially since they don't keep flashing back to the future. We're going to need more time at the end with the future sets of characters, so. Ugh. I just want the baby to be born because we see a lot of shots of her in the opening, like following people around and looking at people and stuff. And we see that she grows a bit older in the opening as well before she grows into a full adult form too. So I thought she was going to be in this more, is all I'm saying. Now I'm looking forward to her introduction, but that means next week we have to see how Miyakichi and Sukuroku get together. Oh, and how Yakubo takes that. So that should be a good one. This one, for me, was actually the worst one of the season so far. Still not bad, mind you. It was a good episode. It just wasn't as amazing as the rest of them have been so far. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you like this review, wreck that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you haven't already seen more. And I will see you guys next time.